Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino, the, the Big, Big Dinosaur, Dinosaur Podcast, Podcast, where we cover news, interviews, and discussions of all things dinosaur. Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino. I'm Garrett. And I'm Sabrina. And today we'll be talking about Aquilops Americanus, which means the American Eagle Face, as well as some dinosaur news. So first in dinosaur news, there is a stegosaurus skeleton that's known as Sophie the Stegosaurus, and some paleontologists at the Natural History Museum of London have used a new method to determine how much the stegosaurus weighed. So what they did is they took all of the bones and they scanned them with a 3D scanner and made a simulation of the dinosaur to see what they think it would have weighed. And according to articles, most people are reporting that it weighed around 3,527 pounds, which I think is kind of dumb that they went to the single pounds place when they're estimating. But anyway, it's about what they had imagined and calculated when they're using traditional methods. So it's really just a way of reaffirming their previous estimates. But it's always neat when they use new technology. Yeah, up until last year, the way that scientists figured out how much a dinosaur weighed was based on the size of the bones on their upper arms and thighs. Yeah, those are the bones that we had discussed as being the gold standard for determining the weight of a dinosaur. But obviously, if you can look at the entire bone structure holistically and model it, that could give you more accurate results. But it looks like it's pretty similar so far. The next piece of news is the one I actually think is the most exciting, even though it's maybe not exciting to everybody. <laughs> and that's that the company Crytek, who's known for making the video games, Cry the Crisis series, and other really high-end, graphically impressive games, is at the 2015 Game Developers Conference, and they're showing off some new technology. So specifically, if you know about games, they're talking about their Unreal 4 engine. But what they're doing is they're taking a virtual reality headset company called Oculus. They're using Oculus's new headset called the Crescent Bay virtual reality headset, which isn't on the market yet. But they did a demo called Back to Dinosaur Island. And I looked all over the internet to see if this was a game that was actually going to come out, but as far as I can tell right now, it's just a way to show off the virtual reality headset. But since it's an immersive virtual reality headset, what you do is you put on this headset and it looks like dinosaur babies are about to hatch and you're getting chased by a T-Rex and all sorts of really awesome things. I think it would, I think it would be really cool to be able to go back in time using one of these virtual reality headsets and feel like you're completely back in the Triassic, Cretaceous, or Jurassic period. So pretty much every episode between now and when the new Jurassic Park movie comes out, I'm sure we'll have something to mention about the movie. This week, it's more of a general thing. Jurassic World is introducing a whole bunch of new dinosaur species to the um, series of films, which is great for people who want to learn more about the dinosaurs. They have on their official website a bunch of dinosaurs that are going to, new ones that are going to be in the movie, such as Ankylosaurus and Apatosaurus. There's actually a funny article in Master Herald. The uh, author of the article says that the Apatosaurus is, quote, also an interesting one, resembling the Brontosaurus quite a lot in its appearance, and that's pretty funny to us because mm. it's kind of a well i don't know if it's well known but well known for people for dinosaur enthusiasts at least that brontosaurus is, is not a real dinosaur actually it was a mix-up back in the 1800s and it was a mix of an apatosaurus body with a camarasaurus head and that was partly because of the bone wars going on between marsh and cope which we've mentioned a couple times but we'll go into detail at some point for our UK listeners, because I know there are a few of you out there, <laughs> there's a new children's adventure play area at the Southwater Country Park. And construction has already started on the play area, and they're expecting it to open around May of 2015. There are a lot of features that they're saying that the park will have, 
that I cannot even imagine, but must be really cool. So they say that there's going to be a active volcano, red hot lava flows, a tar quagmire, a dinosaur swamp, and a prehistoric jungle. The video that they have posted on EIBE doesn't show any of those things, but it does show a escape route and a big T-Rex that's skeleton that's buried in a sandbox, so like a huge sandbox with a dinosaur in it, and some other cool-looking things. So that'll be cool to see, and if you're in the UK, maybe you can swing by and see what it's like. Our dinosaur of the day is Aquilops, and that name comes from its hook-like beak on the front of the skull, which it used to snip plants to eat. It was Dr. Andrew Fark from the Raymond M. Alf Museum of Paleontology and his team that discovered Aquila, but they actually only found the skull. The excavation was funded by the National Geographic Society's Committee for Research Exploration, and though the team f- discovered the dinosaur in 1997, the research was published in December 2014. Fark actually spotted Aquilops by chance when a flash of white caught his eye, and it was the teeth embedded in a rock. This dinosaur has been described as about the size of a bunny, so it's just pure luck that he found it. The team made up how Aquilops' body looked based on close relatives. Aquilops lived in southern Montana in the early Cretaceous. The team found it in the Cloverly Formation back in 1997. So Aquilops lived about 106 million years ago, and it's the oldest horned dinosaur found in North America. We say that it's a horned dinosaur, but really it's considered a horned dinosaur just because it's in the Ceratopsian group, but Aquilops didn't actually have any horns. Previously, the oldest Ceratopsian dinosaur found in North America was about 20 million years younger than this one. So a very interesting point was discovered when they looked at Aquilops. It looks like it's more closely related to dinosaurs from Asia than from later horned dinosaurs that were found in North America, and this helps provide more evidence that dinosaurs traveled between the Asian continent and the North American continent at the time. They probably traveled via the Bering Strait about 108 or so million years ago. Far actually nicknamed Aquilops the little dinosaur that could because it was so small and made such a long journey. But as Garrett mentioned, Aquilops was more closely related to Asian horned dinosaurs, And because it's so distantly related to North American horned dinosaurs, scientists think that there were at least two or more migrations in the later Cretaceous. At first, scientists thought Aquilops was a different dinosaur called Zephyrosaurus. Aquilops has a rostral bone, which forms the upper beak and is one of the features that makes it a horned dinosaur. But it also had this strange bump or prong on the front. And it's not clear what this bump was for. It could have been for fighting or digging or something else. So Sabrina mentioned that Aquilops is about the weight of a bunny, and its total size was about the size of a raven. Unfortunately, this estimate comes from only having a skull because they haven't discovered any other bones of Aquilops yet. So the team thinks that the Aquilops skull that they found belonged to a a juvenile dinosaur, not fully grown, not a baby either. This is partly based on bone texture, but since they only discovered the skull, there were obviously no limb bones, so it's hard to tell exactly how old it was. However, they still named Aquilops its own species because of the unique shape of the beak and other distinguishing characteristics of the skull. What's interesting is, we've mentioned before, Jack Horner has done a couple of TED Talks about dinosaurs, and one of his TED Talks is about how scientists like to name new species, but sometimes later on it's discovered that the new species is actually just a juvenile version of a different species, and so there's not actually as many species as we may think. And some dinosaurs looked very different as babies, and then as juveniles, and then as full-grown adults. So it's not always clear right away that they are the same species. And as Jack Horner said, one of the ways to figure out an age of the dinosaur is to slice through the bones and see how spongy it is. The spongier it is, the younger the dinosaur was. So in the case of Aquilops, obviously there's no bones to cut through. Apparently it is difficult to tell based from the skull bone, the age of a dinosaur, you need the actual limbs. 
So it's interesting that they still feel that there's enough distinguishing characteristics to make it its own species, yet we also have heard, you know, based on Jack Horner's talk, that maybe they're just jumping to conclusions here. But if we do take their word that it is its own species, it would have been a very cute dinosaur. <laughs> Yeah. Even as an adult, Aquilops did not have horns or a neck frill like Triceratops and other famous Ceratopsia. Aquilops weighed fully grown and estimated three and a half pounds and was about 24 inches long or two feet, which is obviously tiny compared to a lot of the dinosaurs we've talked about so far. The skull that they discovered was about 3.3 inches long, which is just tiny. <laughs> And because of its size and the shape of its beak, they think that Aquilops probably snipped at ferns, saplings, and other plants with its beak. Being a small dinosaur, Aquilops probably walked on two legs and had a long tail to balance it out. The team that discovered Aquilops made a 3D model of the dinosaur, and they plan on adding to it as they learn more. So they'll figure out more of its behaviors and how it looks and everything. Going back to how... Aquilops is distantly related to North American horned dinosaurs. It is actually 40 million years older than Triceratops, but Triceratops weighed 4,000 times more than Aquilops. Very few fossils of ceratopsians in North America from the early Cretaceous have been found, so finding any more Aquilops specimens will take a lot of luck because it's so small. And actually, it's the only ceratopsin found in the Cloverleaf Formation so far. Where Aquilops falls in the Ceratopsian family tree may be more of a side branch than as part of the main part of the tree. And there's a side branch for small horned dinosaurs in the early Cretaceous. Currently, Aquilops' skull is at the Sam Noble Oklahoma Museum of Natural History in Norman, Oklahoma, as part of a new exhibit in the Hall of Ancient Life. And it's actually next to a pentaceratops, which has the Guinness World Record for the largest dinosaur skull found. So that would be an interesting juxtaposition <laughs> to see. <laughs> yeah. So Aquilops is in the Neoceratopsian family. And the Neoceratopsians came from Asia. Othniel Charles Marsh named Ceratopsians in 1890. And the name means horn face. Their early ancestors lived in the Jurassic and ceratopsians are unique for a rostral bone on the upper jaw. Actually, no other animal has ever had this. This bone forms a parrot-like beak, and they have a triangular-looking skull as a result. Early ceratopsians were small and bipedal, like Aquilops, but later ones such as Triceratops got much larger quadrupedal and had horns and neck frills. The frills may have been used for protection, thermoregulation, or display, but the horns were most likely used for defense. Ceratopsians have been found in North America, Europe, and Asia, and at least some types of ceratopsians lived in herds. Like modern herds that migrate, ceratopsians would have greatly impacted their environment and been a major food source. Ceratopsians are usually considered to be herbivores, but scientists have speculated that some may have been omnivorous. Ceratopsians may also have been cathomeral, which means they're active during the day for short periods of time. If you want to get a better idea of what ceratopsians looked like, you can see a wall of ceratopsian skulls at the Natural History Museum of Utah in Salt Lake City. Actually, we saw it two years ago. Yeah, around there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is really cool. It gives a good indication of how the ceratopsian group varied and what kinds of different horns and patterns they had. Our fun fact today is that scientists think there are more than a thousand species of non-avian dinosaurs and that many are still undiscovered. There may be up to 1,800 different genera, which is a pretty huge number, but like we mentioned, some of them might be double-counted or juveniles or something. It's always fun when they find new ones, though. And that wraps up this episode of I Know Dino. From now until March 15th, we're doing a big dinosaur podcast giveaway. There's no purchase necessary, but to enter, go to inodino.com slash podcast giveaway, where you can review our podcast on iTunes, view our Facebook page, join our mailing list, and tweet us or follow us on Twitter at inodino. 
Prizes include a $50 gift card to iTunes, a free copy of Dr. Anthony J. Martin's book Dinosaurs Without Bones, and a free copy of the documentary Dinosaur 13. Until next time. Thank you for listening to I Know Dino. If you have any questions or comments about dinosaurs, we'd like to hear from you at plesiosaur at iknowdino.com. And for more information on dinosaurs, go to iknowdino.com or follow us on Google, Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter at iknowdino.